Hey friends, it's prom and wedding season, so perfect time for some boutonnieres. Did you catch my video last week on this beautiful corsage that we made together? So let's go ahead and make a matching boutonniere so you and your partner can match perfectly. But before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any felt flower tips or tricks along the way we're coming out with weekly videos. All right, let's get to it. Before we get started, I have a link below in the description to all the patterns that you can purchase for a very low cost in PDF and SVG format so that you can either hand cut all of these pieces or you can cut them on your Silhouette Cameo or Cricut Maker. If not, they're all basic shapes that you could probably hand cut on your own too. Let's get started with the Chamomile Daisy. So I've got two of these smaller daisy shapes and then one felt ball. This is a 10 millimeter felt ball. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and cut this ball in half. Just be real careful, it's a small little guy. Next thing, we're gonna go ahead and get some 22 gauge wire. We're gonna keep this relatively long because it's a boutonniere and we want all the stems to kinda, you know, have some plate, a place to go and some room to wrap. So let's do about five inches. Probably more than we need, but it's easier to cut wire off at the bottom than it is to add more. So we're gonna make tiny little tables here for both of our flowers. We're gonna fish it through the middle. And then add one of our felt ball centers. We're gonna cut each little valley on our petals all the way to the middle. And then add a little bit of glue right at the base of the petal. Pinch and hold up until our glue dries and sets. And then we're gonna do the same thing all the way around to each one of our petals. All right, here are our two chamomile daisies. All right, for our next flower, we're gonna go ahead and do like a stock flower here. So I have two of these shapes. It is, they're about two and a quarter by two and a quarter and they have 10 little bumpy bump scallops on them. So you can easily hand cut them or go ahead and snag that uh, PDF file for hand cutting on freezer paper or the SVGs to machine cut them. It takes all the guesswork out for you. So these we're gonna go ahead and cut straight in half to make four pieces. We're then going to make little cuts into each valley of our petals. And we're not going all the way down. We're leaving about you know a good chunk of material at the bottom and that's where we're gonna use to glue. So be sure that that's there. And then we're gonna go ahead and just kind of mess with the petals a little bit. And I'm just going through each petal and putting little squigglies and divots and just making them all a little different through all of them. So we're gonna do the same thing on all of our petals. Okay, so we have all these cut out and I'm going to use this Tombow yellow marker and it's just a felt tip pen that you can use multiple different things or different techniques to dyeing it. But what I'm basically gonna do is just kind of color yellow on the top tips of my flower. That's just gonna give it a little bit more dimension and fun and flair to it instead of just kind of blending in on itself. So I'm gonna do this on both sides. You can use pan pastels, you could use watercolors, uh, colored pencils, right? You know, even Crayola markers are felt tip markers. So if you have got Crayola markers at home, you can use those too. Tombow is great because they've got pretty much every single color under the sun. So that's one reason why I really like using their brand, but Crayola works just as great. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on each petal here. Just make sure you have like a scrap piece of paper under it with whatever you're doing so that way you're not, you're just protecting your surfaces. 
I also have videos on how to use pan pastels and watercolors on your felt. So go check those out if you're interested in different ways that you can dye your flowers. All right, so we've got all four done. We're gonna go ahead and put that aside. We're gonna get another wire here. This one's gonna be a little bit longer because this is a stock flower, so it's gonna be a longer flower. So you wanna make sure you have enough wire. So I'm gonna do this one probably about six inches long. Again, I'm way over killing it on the wire, but it's way easier to have too much than it is to have too less. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue on those first two petals, put our wire in it, and we're gonna kind of just sandwich it and kind of start wrapping it around. So we're gonna put some more glue here and then twist while also kind of bringing it down a little bit. You don't want it completely level the whole time. So we're gonna make these little floofy parts of our flower. It's a very technical flower term, floof part. So make sure you remember that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, put some glue on it, and this time we're gonna go a little bit lower and then wrap it around. So it's gonna be like a long flower. This is kind of like a stocky, like wild flower that you would just see in a field with just long little flowers. So we're gonna do this four times. And you can tell just from this, just adding that color on the edge just totally makes this flower so much more fuller and dynamic and it doesn't blend in on itself and it gives it so much more depth and dimension than just like a plain colored flower. Okay, so here is our stock flower. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and make our mini ranuncula flower. Let's talk about what we need. So we have a 15 millimeter felt ball in green. I've got two one inch circles in green. I've got five orange one inch circles. I've got six one and a half inch circles in tangerine and six one and a half circles in sunshine. So we're gonna prep all of our petals first and we're gonna do this on our orange, tangerine and sunshine petals, not the green ones, but we're gonna take a little bit of a triangle out of each petal and then we'll glue them. We're gonna put a little bit of glue on the edge, rotate it over and make this dome shape. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on all of our petals, except for the green ones. So I've got all of those petals ready. We're gonna take these ones and we're gonna go ahead and cut them in half. We're gonna put glue on half of one of them, put it on our felt ball, and then we're gonna start moving around with our half petals here. This is gonna overlap on the glue side. And then on our flap that was open, we're gonna put glue in and kind of like close the circle. Okay, we're gonna take our next batch of small petals here. And we're gonna start moving these around. So I'm doing this kind of tight and overlapping pretty good. It's kind of scooping over a little bit. It's not like an open one, it's kind of like a small, tight little ranuncula. And we're just gonna keep working ourselves around, just evenly spacing our five puddles. And I'm gluing it at the bottom where the seam is. So that's kind of hiding under the, the bottom of the flower. And this is an ombre flower. So the next color we're gonna pull is this tangerine color. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So these ones, we're gonna tightly around and we're gonna kind of push them kind of like this where it's gonna sit on that little scoopy bucket seat. And we're gonna work our way around again. 
And then if you caught the corsage video already, it is all basically the exact same flowers we're making today. But I'll show you in a minute how we're gonna assemble them in a boutonniere. So the last layer, so these were all tight, and then the last layer is in our sunshine yellow. We're gonna kind of open up our flower a little bit. So we're gonna put it a little bit lower and kind of fan it out a little bit. Like so. So now we have our ranuncula. All right, we're gonna make a little leaf base, add it to a wire, and then we're gonna do some leaves, and then we're almost there. So we're gonna cut a square, probably about yayish big. And this will go on the bottom of our flower. Yayish big is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half square, and that's gonna match this flower size pretty well. And we're gonna make a four pointed leaf base for our flower. And this is just gonna sandwich it on the wire and keep it very secure. And I'm just literally going from corner to corner and rounding it in the middle to make a leaf shape on each corner. I'm gonna get another piece of wire. This is about five inches, just like my other ones. And we're gonna do another little tabletop. Fish this through. We're gonna throw some glue over all of the leaf and plop our flower on. And now it's on a stem. Okay, and here is our ranuncula. So I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna do some leaves real quick and then we'll assemble it all together. So I've got two leaves here and we're gonna put a little bit of glue and pinch them shut. I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. Okay. And then the way we're gonna assemble these on a wire is we're going to get another piece of wire and another like five inch piece. And we're gonna glue this on one side and then sandwich it with the other leaf. I'm just gonna put my wire here. A little bit more glue. And I'm actually gonna go a little bit lower. I'm not gonna make it perfectly picked perfectly parallel with each other. So one is a little bit lower than the other. Okay, so now we're gonna kinda do our assembling. So obviously this is our main piece and since it's a boutonniere, we're gonna wanna kinda make the flower face forward. We definitely don't want it to just be facing up because then nobody's gonna be able to see it. We'll just put that behind our leaves. And the thing I love about doing things on wire is you can kinda like twist and turn them a little bit and give them a little bit more movement. So this will go underneath here. And then again, these two, we kind of want to like bend the flowers forward so that they're facing front. And we can either do them here on the bottom. I think I kind of like them right here. And then do another one. And then back to the side. We definitely want our leaves shown here too. This gives it the full, so there you go. Gives you a little bit of everything, some height and character, and then you can bend and move this around so it fits perfectly. So, I'm definitely kind of liking how this fits. Um, and that's the thing, I like to dry fit everything ahead of time so you can keep rearranging it until you're really happy with it before you start wrapping it up and kind of locking everything in. You could almost do, yeah, kind of like that too. Or we can see. Hmm. Nope, I liked it. Ta da! Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some floral tape. I'm gonna trim off that edge here. And we're gonna tightly wrap the whole thing. 
So the way I do this is I'm holding really, really tight with one hand and I'm stretching the floral tape and wrapping it on itself here and really wrapping it around so that when you stretch the floral tape, it opens the wax inside and that's what's sticking on itself. So I didn't go all the way to the top. I kind of kind of went a little further down because you don't want the whole thing wrapped to the tippy top. And I'm going all the way down. Okay, and then just pulling it off. So here is basically our shape. And then that's the other thing, like you can still adjust and keep moving where everything goes. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna trim this because I don't want it this long. And it just depends on how long you want it. You can go shorter, longer, whatever you like. I'm also going to wrap it in felt at this point because I want the stem to be thicker. So when you're working with wire, obviously these wires are really, really thin. And when you're working with real flowers, the stems on flowers are significantly thicker. So I just wanna like beef it up a little bit so it has more of like a presence on there. So it doesn't look out of place. So I'm gonna kind of measure how long it is. And then I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue, set it on top. We're just gonna roll this a few times. A little bit of glue here. I'm not gonna roll, put glue on the whole thing yet because I kinda wanna roll it a few times until I'm happy with the, the diameter of the stem. Okay, so I found a good diameter, snipped off some extra, and I just glued that last piece shut. So now it looks a little funky and you're, you've got a bunch of glue messies and it's not the best, so we need to finish it now. Now this is the fun part. This is where you can match it with whatever else you're doing. If you're making a bridal bouquet or to match an outfit or color or ribbon, you can choose what you're gonna wrap the stem in. So right now I'm gonna use twine, but you could use obviously ribbon, chiffon ribbon, really whatever you're doing with your bouquet or if you wanted something, a specific color that's matching like a prom dress or that sort of thing. So for this, I'm gonna use twine. Now, this is the next piece that you can either opt for or not opt for. So normally, boutonnieres, what they come with like a longer kind of like sewing pin and you put it on and then you pin between the stems and the flowers and the jacket lapel. So that is definitely one option that you could use. The way I do it is I use, um, safety pins here. Well, it's not like a, it's a safety pin fastener. So it's got this little opening and then you could literally just pin it on your lapel and you're it's good to go and it's not gonna fall out and not accidentally stab anyone. So the way I do these is before I wrap it with the either, whatever you're gonna wrap it, twine, ribbon, whatever, I like to affix this. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on the back. And now we're gonna start wrapping. I'm gonna take our twine. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. Well, actually I need to close this first. Uh, we're gonna put a little glue here at the top. Let this twine set. I'm gonna let my glue set and cool just a little bit because I'm gonna put my finger on it. And then I'm only gonna place glue in the back. So if it ever gets slightly messy, you're not gonna see it. So I'm gonna wrap it once. Then I'm gonna pin this to a flower at the top so it just stays out of my way. So now I'm going to start putting some glue down to hold my twine. So I need a little bit here to hold it here. And then we're going to start move, working our way down. And then I'm going to put, I'm just going to put glue on the bottom of the safety or the pin backing and just start wrapping and then catching that glue. And then I just keep going around and wrap. You could do the same thing with ribbon. I've done, used lots of different materials, but it's basically the exact same technique and I'm just putting a little bit of glue and wrapping it. Okay, so for the bottom, we're gonna put glue all the way around the bottom. I'm gonna trim this because it's more at the base. And then for this part, we're going to cover the bottom with glue. And you have to be really patient, but we're just gonna kind of coil it. 
and then tuck that part in. Trim it a little bit and tuck it into the glue. And it just closes it up on the bottom and you can't see it. Okay, so last thing, we're gonna unhook our little pin from the top, fold it back down, lock it back in place, and now it is ready to go. There you have it. I really appreciate having the closed pin in the back. You can definitely hook it onto the jacket and it just holds there really nice and tight without having to worry about pens and stabbing and that all fun stuff. I really hope you loved making this boutonniere with me. And again, the fun thing about this is you still have wires to move it around as you please. I hope you loved having the matching set. And be sure to catch all of the download links on my website, which is in the link below in the description. It definitely helps support my channel to keep making more videos for you guys. Feel free to leave me a comment about what you loved and what event you have coming up that you need to make a boutonniere for. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to not miss any more future videos. Thanks guys, I'll catch you next time.